right, good evening everyone. I welcome all the speakers and our audience for today's webinar on the topic, Automization and Digital Digitization of Manufacturing Process, the way forward for Indian textiles. Brought to you by Amec Amtex in partnership with DTextile Magazine. By default, all the mic and webcam of all the attendees would be on mute. But if you have any specific questions, please feel free to use the chat window, mention your name, your organization whom you represent, and the speaker whom you want to address the question to, so that we can get back to your question after the webinar is over. If not, if the time doesn't permit, then the speaker will definitely get back to you after the webinar is over directly. Okay, without further ado, let me welcome Mr. Alejandro Gallego, who's the director of Spanish Textile Missionary Association, and he will be giving a small presentation about his association and its activities, following which Mr. Lucas, will introduce the first speaker for today's session. Okay, so I request Mr. Alejandro to take the session forward. Alejandro? Yes, uh, thank you, Ganesh. Um, hello, everyone. First, before I start uh, introducing uh, the webinar and my context, I hope everyone is fine and safe uh, despite this uh, crazy situation we are all now living. First, uh, I would like also to, to thank the Textile Magazine <clears throat> for giving us the opportunity of being here with, with you today. No? Also, thank you to you for the audience for participating in this interesting webinar. And also, last but not least, uh, to all the Spanish textile technology manufacturers, which today are also participating and they will be pitching their experiences in this exciting topic as the digitalization of the textile sector is. First, you might be asking yourselves, who are we? In Amec Amtex, we are uh, the Spanish Textile Technology Manufacturers Association. Uh, what, we, what do we do? We build bridges between the Spanish manufacturers and very carefully selected industrial hubs around the world. We are mainly focused on the textile manufacturing due to the great experience our uh, textile manufacturing, textile technology manufacturing uh, companies, they already have. Our main goal is to achieve critical industrial collaborations in terms of product development and technology transference. You know, when two companies, they collaborate, great things are coming ahead. So we think that this is what we have to enhance, not just for Spanish uh, companies, also, for in this case, for example, Indian textile manufacturers, which they might also find fruitful collaboration with the different uh, Spanish uh, companies. You might have heard about Amecamtex in the frame of different ITMAs, where the Spanish manufacturers play a leading role in each edition. Last year, in 2019, we held it in, in Barcelona. I guess some of you, maybe you visit uh, Barcelona and also attended to, to the exhibition. And uh, as we did with uh, some Indian companies that we welcomed during the exhibition, we will be also happy to, to engage with you in every doubt or in every uh, comment you would like to do. Today, Spanish technology manufacturers are here to tackle one of the industry's biggest challenge. How should an industrial manufacturer embrace digitalization? There are many doubts, there are many ways to embrace digitalization, but today we are eager no, to, to hear you doing questions to us and also to know uh, how are you embracing this, uh, this new change because these uh, three companies today that are going to be with us and are going to share their experiences with us, they have a wide experience of engaging in different projects, in uh, being close to the different textile manufacturers in their projects in order to enhance their productivity. So these guys that you're going to hear today, that to listen today, they know what are they talking about because they have been working on it. So uh, thanks again for attending today to this webinar. I hope you can enjoy it. And please, Luca, uh, I leave you the floor. Thank you, Alejandro. Uh, good afternoon, everyone. It's a pleasure to be here today with you. Um, let, me, let me first introduce myself. I'm Lucas Duchatel. I'm in charge of the marketing, uh, marketing and promotion activities in Asia for Amec Amtex company members. And uh, uh, I would like to introduce uh, first 
uh, the first speaker of today uh, from EA, EAS Escare. Uh, that is a company that has more than 30 years of experience worldwide in textile industries. They provide solutions for, your, for companies by integrating and connecting all the areas of your industry with the latest software, automation systems, and all, and all kind of dozing machines developed by the company in Barcelona, Spain. I would like to introduce Francesc Lopez, area manager at EAS, an Indian resident and specialist in international business, uh, accumulated, accumulating experience in the textile industry since 2000, covering markets worldwide for different companies, fabric, producer, fabric producers until 2008, and in software since then. Francesc, please. Lucas, thank you very much indeed for this presentation. And also thank you to the attendants and to the organizers to make this webinar possible. As Lucas said, my name is Frances Lopez and I'm a manager from EAS, the company based in, in Barcelona. 15 minutes, it's really short time in order to, to, to do this presentation, but we will do a nutshell presentation and certainly many questions will arise. So please, Feel free to contact us at any time. Ourselves and our teams in India will help, be happy to help. We will walk briefly through a success story into the integration of his solutions to one of our customers. Please note that we at EAS, we are 100% concentrated into the textile business since 1990. But before that, we need to explain a few concepts so we can frame today's situation and move forward from, from there. We are in the midst of a significant transformation regarding the way we produce products, thanks to the digitization and automation of manufacturing. The inevitable digitization and automation of everything, whatever can be digitized will be. Anything that can be automated will be. Everything that can be automated will be automated and everything will become digital. That's a kind of digital Darwinism in a way. Next, please. What is Industry 4.0? Industry 4.0 is one of the big buzzwords that is flying around at the moment, and it basically refers to the fourth industrial revolution. We have seen transformative technologies that have changed industry. At the moment, this fourth industrial revolution sees smart factories with connected machines and intelligent robots. But how do we get there? Next. The first industrial revolution basically started in the 1770s, moving from hand to machine, from farms to the first factories using steam and water power. Then, 100 years later, electricity arrived and the next industrial revolution. So this gives us automation, it gave us assembly lines. So this was the real start of factories as we know them today. Another 100 years later, we have the computer arrived around 1970. Now we have computers that go to allow us to automate some of the blue collar working factories. Some have electronics on them, and this is the latest industrial revolution, which has just started, which we refer to as Industry 4.0, and is not looking at these individual computerized machines, but this will net the whole network of them. They are all talking to each other. Next. We have intelligent factories, and some of the underlying technologies of this new industrial revolution is the Internet of Things. We have smart machines and software. We have sensors in them that are connected to networks and talk to each other so they can diagnose their own problems and alert some, someone that something is wrong with, within the machines. We have big data. So all these machines generating huge volumes of data that we can use now and analyze and we can use things like artificial intelligence and machine learning to make sense out of all this data so we can get things like productive maintenance where a machine or an assembly line will tell us that this may be going to break 
down in the next day or so. So we need to fix things before they actually ha ever happen. We are now happy to connect it to supply chains where ships are talking to warehouses. They are talking to trucks. And this enables us to have more intelligent robots and autonomous things like vehicles and drones. This means that now we have ships arriving, the containers can be tracked. The warehouse can be ready even if there is a delay. And we are to add key concepts as sustainability, certifications, and trustability that deserves a complete webinar by themselves, all looking to a better efficiency of our companies and our responsibility to the society, looking for right first time, right second time, and of course, all has to be user friendly. So this is industry 4.0. Next, please. Those images belong to real textile mills from different countries worldwide, picturing a well-known scenario. All machines, all controls, if any, and very often with no further communication to other sections in the textile plant. Engineering of new products are isolated, lab to production plant, so management of the recipes impossible to follow the complete roadmap of a match in the plant. Planning hardly can be uh, matched and prepared analyzing costs becoming very hard, communicating with ERP or to have updated inventories. Too many processes done manually with the risk of human errors. We don't expect you to replace everything and to build a brand new factory. Of course, simply allow EAS to analyze in depth your company, your reality, and we at EAS will bring you our skills, experiences with customers worldwide of any size, to start to assist you with the solutions developed and produced in Barcelona, but matching with your needs and reality. We can help in this new world of smart connected machines and intelligent robots. That uh, basically means that this new industrial revolution brings us that we need to rethink our businesses. We need to take from third industrial revolution to this new brave world of the industry 4.0, and we need to develop our skills. We need to figure out what is the role of the people we will play in all of this. And we are now talking about cobots, and we are to share our working in the environment with intelligent robots. So we need to make sure that we will find a place for all of us. And this is what will, and this is what we help textile companies to help them to prepare for this new fourth industrial revolution and we help them to shape their businesses, their processes, so they can leverage of all these new technologies and like previously, and previous industrial revolutions, the organizations that they don't prepare for these new very quickly, they will be left behind. If you are a company that you make everything manually and not interconnected, you will be superseded by someone else that makes everything automatically. And you, in the same way anyone that doesn't leverage of all this industry, you will not be as efficient, as effective. You will not deliver smart solutions to your customers, and therefore you will be left behind. Next, please. We provide controllers, those machines. At the end, the artificial in intelligence is the most powerful technology available to mankind today. I believe it will completely transform all of our jobs. It will transform how businesses are run and it will transform our society. All the implications of artificial intelligence are much wider reaching than most people actually believe at that moment. What artificial intelligence now allows us to do is to allow computers to see in those computers, to hear, allows machines to walk, to talk, and sometimes EAI is seen as a magical new thing. Actually, it has been around since 1950s. What has changed more recently is that now we have a better computer power and we have had this massive explosion of the amount of data that we are collecting. 90% of all the data that the world has generated has been during the last 18 months or so. So we now have huge volumes of data and it has changed things in the past. We have to, to, to be had in the past, real based. We are helping you to go through this process. We help you to manage 
all the difficulties in a very easy way. Please next. How can we do this, right? So the same is no true for machine learning algorithm. We give them million information and we are able to learn by themselves. In particular, when we know we have different layers of those neural networks we got, we talk about that deep learning. Deep learning is some of the leading edge AI that we are seeing at the moment. And this is allowing companies like Facebook or others to recognize you in a photograph and tag your friend. So we help to identify with the data we provide to the system, what are the best solutions for you. So we at EAS, we have the results in small recipes and working for uh, to get into the eco footprint for our customers to provide information to the blockchain for sustainability. At EAS, we do have the idea to assist you to reach the highest level of the industry 4.0. And one of the tools we provide is the OE metrics to help you to analyze every single step that affects the effectiveness of your company. This is why we need to be connected with a plan, with our solutions. Next, please. EAS success story with any customer is the ability to connect software to the plant and all the parts in the plant. Text drive, EAS ERP is the only ERP connecting with the plant and able to follow the complete drive roadmap in any batch, from the preparation to the shipment, from the engineering to the control of the inventories of the cost, taking care of the management of the production at the same time able to connect with any other ERP that you may have in hands that is valid for accounts or human resources management. And we can connect with all the machines, the dosing machines, the maintenance team, and even if you provide all the information and all the protocols, we can connect also with managing software from, from our competitors. Next, please. I'm just giving you a short list about some of the benefits of using the smart recipe that we provide to our customers, automation of the recipes, cost savings into the chemicals, the colorants, the human resources and the mistakes that can be done at that time. We help with the artificial intelligence and we help with the optimization of the, of the processes. Next, please. So we are coming to a very important point, digitalization and automation. Digitalization is becoming really big in the textile industry. On this COVID time, digitalization is the most used word worldwide when specialists and panelists do their meetings, webinars, presentations, and you can read it in white papers and all kinds of documents. We are seeing it's increased usage for the new projects, as well for the automation projects of all plants, where they are going through turnaround and maintenance activity of the overall goal of digitalization to maximize the effectiveness. This to happen, we are to seize a complete, create a complete network of software and connect it to all the machines on the plant. So you feed all the big data to our systems and to our Euro specialists, are to analyze them and to map to make the needed actions, correcting actions. Just a note that the second most used worldwide word when it comes to business, reshoring, and when analyzing the chances and possibilities per country, India appears constantly as a winning country. So please prepare your companies for the future to come very soon. Next slide, please. Just wrapping it up all together. EIS is a one-stop shop provider and single control point for managing textile plants. Control of the production and weaving, knitting, printing, and complete management in processing plant. Why EIS? Because we are textile industry specialists. As we said before, just from 1990 in this field of activity. We help you to do full integration in the integral management of the, of the textile companies with a single point of contact to connect all kinds of systems and machines, software, automation for all kinds of machines and dosages, dosing machines. Experience in 1990 with customers all over the world. 
And this is it. Just to thank you for your time, for your interest. Just to underline that if you'd like to learn more about EAS, please head to EAS website at escarre.com that you see at the lower part, and you can find tons of articles, white papers, and videos that will give you a lot more insight of the real world, case studies, and examples. Thank you very much indeed for your time. Who's next? Thank, thank you, Fra Francesc. It was really, really interesting. And uh, without further delay, um, our next speaker will be the Pinter Group, uh, who is a world leader in soft core attachments, slub attachments, and monitoring systems for spinning mills. They have a worldwide commercial network of agents and facilities in Spain, Italy, India, and China. In China, sorry. Uh, I would like to welcome Josep Torrent, textile, en textile en engineer uh, with a long experience in spinning. As a COO of the Pinter Group, he takes care of the commercial department, production, and after sales service. Josep. Excuse me, Josep, uh, we, we can't hear you. Okay, now, yeah. yeah yes, better, thank you. Okay, I would like first to thank uh, AMEC and the Textile Magazine for this opportunity to talk about our uh, one of our products, okay, which is the monitoring systems, okay? Um, as Lucas said, uh, Pinter Group uh, is world leader in Lycra attachment and slap attachments, but today we are going to talk about monitoring systems. Okay, next. Okay, um, I'm going to talk about one of our products, which is uh, FISPIN. FISPIN is a monitoring system for spinning mills. Okay. And uh, we have a part which is hardware part, and we have a part which is a software part. Okay, as a reference, okay, uh, we are going to reduce costs, okay, labor costs. Uh, we are going to reduce also waste, and, uh, and uh, we are going to improve quality. Okay, this is the aim of this product, okay, FSP. Please, next. Okay, um, inside the spinning mill, there are different departments, okay? Our control starts from the carving, okay? We can control carts, uh, draw frames, combers, rowing frames, spin, uh, ring frames, winding and twisting, okay? Spinning, okay, ring frames are the most important and the most costly department inside the spinning mill. And we are now today going to concentrate on the products that we have for this particular department. Okay, please next. Okay. Um, the monitoring can be done from uh, different levels. Okay. And we have uh, what we call labor level. Okay. From the machine itself, from the ring frame. Then on the ring frame where we have the sensor, we are going to talk about this later. And uh, then we have the touch screens. Each ring frame has a touch screen. Okay, the sensor sends the information to the touch screen. Okay, and the touch screen uh, sends the information to one central computer. It can be a PC server, but the software also works in the cloud. We can connect this software also to the ERP system of the customer and also to the quality lab, okay? So the architecture, as you can see, is, is very simple, okay? Please, next. Now, we are going, I said uh, we have two parts. One is the hardware and the other one is the software. We are going to talk about the hardware now, about the sensors and the drawing stock. Please, next. Okay, here we have the sensor. This is the uh, main item of hardware that we have on the machines. Okay, this is an optical sensor, which is 
checking that the traveler is running around the ring. Okay. Actually, we are checking two things. We are checking whether it is turning or not, and we are also checking the frequency. Okay, so we know whether the spindle is losing twist or not. Okay, on each sensor, we have one light, as you can see. Uh, okay, now it's in red. It means that the spindle, the yarn is broken. But we have three different colors as well. Okay, we have orange, we have blue. Depending on what is happening to the spindle, a different light will turn on. Okay, this information is being sent. Okay to the uh, uh, touch screen, okay, of the machine, which you have a view underneath, okay, and you can see good spindles, low twist spindles, broken spindles, the spindles which are deactivated, and then there is also different information for maintenance, okay? Please, next. Okay, this is the second item of the hardware, okay, which is the rowing stop. Um, the Pinter rowing stop is well known because we are also using it for the lycra attachments. But the same rowing stop, we can use it also for monitoring system, okay? So it means that if the yarn breaks, we can stop the rowing. If the lycra breaks, we can also stop the rowing, okay, with the same rowing stop, which means that we will avoid waste and we will avoid lappings. Okay, the worker, when it comes to piecing, it will piece much, much faster. Okay, these are the two items, the sensors and the rowing stop. Please, next. Now we come to the software, okay? The software which is in this PC server that we set. Uh, we have two parts, one is the platform and the other one are the extra modules, okay? Please, next. Okay. Um, on the platform, um, we have, let's say, uh, basic information, the platform engine, which makes the software run, okay, and then different analysis that now we will see what we can have. And then the extra module. Uh, some people uh, might not want to have the planning, for example, or maintenance, or the ERP connection, or other modules that are going to be released. Okay, so these extra modules are optional. Okay, uh, please next. Okay, let's let's focus on the platform. Okay, we call it platform because on this platform we uh, we can put several things. We can run several things, several modules and several screens. Okay. Most important part is the platform engine, okay? This is what makes everything run, okay? Second thing is machine performance, okay? On this screen, you can see the, delay, the layout of your machines and you can see the status, whether they are running, the, the efficiency, the number of breaks, uh, just uh, basic information uh, 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 for, for a lookout, okay? To see how your, um, your, your machines are running. Okay, you click on one of those and then you go to that particular machine and you can analyze what is going really on on that machine in particular. Okay, please, next. Okay, uh, when you go inside of one of the machines, uh, you have a dashboard, okay? The dashboard we have designed, now we call it as you like. Different customers want to see different kind of information. So you can build your own screen according to whatever you want the efficiency the the um the labor uh, how they are doing uh, um, the power consumption different types of information can be shown so we call it as you like and then another screen is the stop chart okay this is you can say typical in all monitoring systems because you can see all the machines one after another and what they have been doing during some period of time. Of course, the time is settleable. You can, you can go back and forth and check, for example, how did your night shift did, okay? Uh, normally, uh, red lines means stop, the machines is stopped, and uh, green means it's running, and uh, yellow means it is doffing, 
Okay, so but different colors are also available. For example, uh, mechanical breakdown, this type, this type of things are also uh, programmable. Please, next. Now, um, we have a spindle analysis. What is a spindle analysis? Um, the spindle, since we have a sensor in each spindle, we know what all the spindles are doing. So we can see the active spindles, the raw spindles, the idle spindles, how many times the spindle has the yarn broken, low twist spindles. Okay, so this is like a summary, okay, of, of what is going on on that particular machine. Okay. Um, this is very useful. For example, you make a printout of this, you give it to your maintenance people, okay, you say, look, you have to look at these machines. Forget about the rest of the spindles because the spindles are, are doing fine, but these spindles have a problem, okay? So also for the maintenance department, okay, um, this is very useful. Then we have a calendar where we can set uh, working days, uh, labor shifts, uh, all these type of things we can, we can program. Please, next. Um, reports, of course, we can do reports and again, they are reports as, as you like. Okay, you can design your new uh, your report to see the information that you really want to see. Okay, and forget about the, all the things. It is impossible for us as a software uh, uh, producer uh, uh, to know exactly all kinds of different uh, programs that uh, report that you would like to have. So we give you the opportunity for you to design your own report and. The point of view, this is this is very interesting. Point of view is that the program allows you to see the information not only from the point of view of machines, but also from operators. It means that you can see one particular person, how he is performing from the point of view of the person, not from the point of view of the machine. So you can compare workers, for example, or you can compare batches. Or you can compare articles, products, type, types of yarn. Okay. Normally, monitoring systems give you the information from the point of view of the machine. Okay, this machine is doing well, this machine is not doing well, we have so many breaks, this and that. No, you can filter the information from the point of view of machines, operators, budget, and articles. Okay, please next. Alarms. Um, of course, uh, we can set alarms on certain parameters that you want to control and the system gives you uh, an alarm that, for example, an efficiency, okay, is going below your uh, threshold, okay. Department of statistics, you can filter the information from the point of view of your department, from the carding department, for example, to know how your cards are doing or from your drawing department, okay, different departments have uh, different uh, uh, characteristics, so you can filter it, okay, from the point of view of the department. M-draft, what is M-draft? M-draft is by adding just small uh, uh, encoders to your rollers, uh, draft rollers, we can check whether the machine, the whole machine, or all of your machines are having the same draft, okay? So, um, Typical mistake, sometimes um, you set one draft on one side of the machine and you set another draft on the other side of the machine. So uh, this is just to check that all the drafts in the machine is the same. Please, next. And power is controlling power consumption. Okay, the power factor, active factor, the, the, the voltages of the three phases, um, the frequency of your, uh, of your power. By adding this a small uh, uh, device, okay, and this device is communicating with our uh, computer and is giving information how your uh, uh, your power consumption is uh, is doing. M climber is the same thing. We have a hydrometer and a temperature a thermometer that we can check the temperature of your uh, hall of your department. Okay, we can have several of them and uh, uh, we can give you a picture of different temperatures in different areas of your um, department. Please, next. 
Okay, uh, of course, all this is connected to a performance app that we have in a mobile. So all this information, you can also have it in your mobile. Okay, please next. And uh, the extra modules, we can have uh, extra modules besides the part we have just seen. The M plan, for example, is how to plan the information in every machine. Okay, you set a lot and the system is telling you this lot is going to finish on this date. You can split lots, you can change lots from one machine to the other. And then maintenance. Maintenance, you can program the maintenance on your machines. Okay. Please, next. The ERP connection, we can connect the system to upload or download information from your ERP system. And also we can uh, download information from your lab, okay? From your regularimeter or from your tensiometer, we can download information to the system and we can make reports inside Smart Dragon. Okay, next. The last one is the uh, M Global. What is M Global? Imagine that you have several mills in different places and you want to see all the information put together. Okay, we have a module that gives you the information how each mill is performing. Imagine that the uh, the um, your uh, headquarters is in uh, is in uh, Bombay. So uh, you have a mill in South Africa, another one in Coimbatore, and another one, I don't know, in, uh, in, uh, in Thailand, okay? So you would see the information put together, okay? Everything in Bombay, okay? Next. Okay, and uh, this is all. Uh, I thank you, okay, for your attention. And if you have any questions, please send them to the textile magazine and I will try to answer all your questions. Thank you very much. Thank you, Josep. Uh, really interesting uh, presentation indeed. Uh, and uh, I will welcome our last speaker of today from Inedis, Inedit Software that offers software solutions for digital printing, creative design, and color management. At the same time, Inedit, Inedit software helps their clients optimize processes and integrate them efficiently in their digital printing workflow. It's my pleasure to introduce you to uh, Gerard Book, who joined Inedit software in 2014 in the technical department. His curiosity gradually led him to become an expert in color management and workflow in digital textile printing. The last years, he has focused on customer training, creating and installing complete workflows for the best management of each company. Currently, he's working uh, in the commercial department of Inedit Software, from where he can advise companies to obtain the best results with the tools they have at their disposal in the sector. Gerard? Hi, thanks a lot uh, for the presentation. So, um, for today, uh, I will try to explain, uh, as you said, uh, we are specialized in workflows. So I will try to uh, explain a little bit how we can manage a full workflow on a, on a printing company based on digital um, and try to so and what well, and try to improve a little bit this workflow. Uh, finally, we are not uh, manufacturers of any kind of machine. We only make software and let I will try to explain how we can improve uh, a workflow only by using software. Um, this our solution goes. Uh, finally, we try to improve uh, the solution from uh, design to printing. It will involve three different softwares, okay, um, uh, which are the the rib software, the design software, and one and, and a different one that will include. Uh, will try to mix and link all of them okay so uh first of all who, who are we uh in edit okay it's founded in 93 uh it's been more than uh, almost 27 years uh working for the textile market okay we started um uh, in development for apple systems but slowly but slowly we've been growing until we are we work especially in the in the textile software and 
making this kind of solution and technology uh, dedicated for the for textiles workflows we started with uh, the rip stampa and and uh, slowly we were including new softwares to uh, evolve on having this uh, full solution for any kind of um, textile company um if you can go next please <clears throat> so Let's start. Uh, as I said, I'm going to explain the, the three main softwares that, that we offer. OK, I will try to uh, explain them uh, individually. And finally, uh, how we can successfully unite all of them and offer this full solution to, to um, let's say, um, uh, any, any kind of customer based, based on that. Neostampa is uh, our RIP software. Uh, the RIP, finally, is the, the software that manages uh, any kind of me, any kind of image, and let it print to a printer. So, uh, the the good point or how we can uh, improve and, and make a speed up uh, the the production with with our rip. First of all, and most important, is that we can calibrate, let's say, calibrate the printer, the colors of the printer, and make it the most efficient, the, the best color matching possible between the the design that we are trying to uh, print and the final result, OK? Also, uh, with Neostampa, we can calibrate several printers, even if they, if, even if they have, um, uh, they are different brand, they use different inks, and we can even uh, uh, calibrate them so that we can have exactly the same result between them. This is uh, the main possibility of Neostampa, which will speed up production. Finally, we will have, let's say, one, um, one design and independently on which machine we're going to print, we'll have the same result without making any modification. And this is the, the main point that can speed up a lot the production uh, uh, in any company when uh, we have several several printers. And as I said, they can be even different technologies, different uh, uh, kind of finishing and, uh, and different brands of, of printer. Also, as I said, it's very important how we match from the color of the design to the to the final result, and we do it with our technology that we we use RGB profiles to do that. It gives uh, it's very easy to create these profiles to make the, the 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 calibration. It's easy, it's precise, and finally, it also gives a, a, a very large gamut of colors, which reduces finally, as I said, in a bet, in a better color matching from design. To printing. Finally, also we have a, 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 a cost control application that a cost control center that uh, will allow you to always see uh, the costs for per machine and 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 keep a, a good control of that. I will also wanted to to mention that next week we're about to launch uh, our new version of a newer version of Neostampa so you can keep track of that and see all the, the news that we're going to propose during next week okay um, if you want we can go to the next one okay so we already talked about the uh, the software that we have for production areas okay it's the the software that controls the machines and also we have uh, a, a different software called Neotextile, okay, which is which we will try to help on the design on the design area. Neotextile it's a it's a software they are it's plugins for Photoshop, okay, so it's Photoshop based. We understand that uh, Photoshop finally it's the platform most used by, by all designers. So most of designers in the world knows how to use it, and that's why we put an effort to give some extra tools inside Photoshop that helps you on, during the design for textiles exclusively, okay? So it's true that Photoshop, it's really nice for creative design, but as I said, it's missing kind of uh, tools that help to textile. For example, if we go to these small windows, these are the four main plugins that uh, that you can see on, on, on the screen, on these four screens, okay? So we have one plugin dedicated to make rapports. Okay, in Photoshop, it's quite difficult to know from a design what will happen when it's going to repeat. So it is a very good help to speed really up how to from a design create the rapport and and uh, to make a continuous printing of it. Second one, uh, the the second plugin we have 
it allows to you, allows you to move from an RGB design to a multi-channel. So it's a very easy way to make separations uh, by colors of a design, which is a, di a digital design, let's say, a, a, just a photography or design meant for digital. So we can create separations of the colors and convert very easily this design into a multi-channel file. Why we would uh, make move to a, to a multi-channel? As you know, uh, it can either be used to print later on in conventional printing, which uh, let, let's think about each channel of this multi-channel file, about uh, let's think of them as the screens uh, that we have later on in conventional printing, but also uh, even if uh, it is already separated into channels, later on we can also put some colors on them and export them again into in for digital printing. So the idea is that we can separate colors, change them, keeping the gradients, keeping the, the original quality of the design, put new colors on that, create new colorways, and then export them for the digital printing again. This is uh, also the third plugin that we see here. The first one is a step and repeat for repeating. The second one is a masquerade, which allows to separate um, designs into multi-channel. Then we have the plugin colorations, which allows to put colors inside the channels, inside these multi-channel files, even using uh, your own color libraries or uh, color libraries like, let's say, Pantone or any other kind of uh, <coughs> defined uh, colors, put them inside, create new colorways, and export them again for the digital for digital printing. And finally, we have a, a last one, which we can put uh, our designs and import them into, um, into models, okay? We can make simulations, uh, 2D simulations with our designs in a very easy way. We only need to prepare them. We can export um, layouts with, uh, with our designs uh, being seen inside 3D models, okay? If we can go next to the next one. Okay, and finally, Neo Catalog <coughs> is the, the application that can link all of this together. As I said, uh, we have um, the software Neo Textile, which will help speed up a lot on the on the design side. We have Neo Stampa, which also will help uh, to speed up a lot on the production side. But how can we communicate these designs from one side to the other? Even there are companies that might have the design in one in one different place than even the production, okay? They not need to be in the same company. This is what we can do with NeoCatalog. NeoCatalog is an online database where we will have all of our um, designs stored inside uh, and it can be visible from anywhere. So the idea is that we can prepare our designs in NeoTextile from design, we can very easily upload and uh, download and upload all our changes on the Neo catalog, which will be this database that can also be consulted from anywhere, okay? And then from production, they can take it, grab it from the Neo catalog very easy and print all the, all the samples that has been prepared into design. As you can see, also we have the Neo catalog application can work on, on iPad <coughs> and also on, on computers. So as I said, it's very easy to uh, from design or from production to, to to input new files and download them so you can send them to print also but also it has the iPad possibility to help also on the on the sales area okay finally from uh, any person from sales for example can have its own iPad and have all the designs on his hand you can go to uh, visiting a, a a possible customer, show all the designs, even create new colorways at the moment, show how it will look with these uh, 3D models, and as I said, have everything on hand and make it very easy also for sales. And all of this will be completely linked always in real time, so any change that can be done uh, on design will be available for everyone else at, this, um, at the same moment, at the same time. So that's why I was uh, I put this order. Neocatalog finally, it's the one that is going to link 
all the all the three softwares we have okay including including it and this is how we can connect all of them and make a very easy workflow as i said from uh, design to print um i wanted to uh, put a kind of um success case that we have in your country okay uh, we've been working with uh, a well-known company uh, in india which is the decor okay uh, they are printing for home uh, they, um, for, for home textiles and we've been working together uh, on this solution since uh, seven years now okay they started also with with, with neostampa which is the main software uh, printing with, with uh, um, as I said, speeding up its production stage, but slowly they found that they have more needs than this, and how we can also, how they could also speed up from design to to an end um, <clears throat> to to production. So let me explain a little bit how we can manage all of this with a small scheme. Uh, you can go next, please. <clears throat> Okay, and this is a little bit of how I explained, but uh, how we can see the you know, the full model that, that we have of workflow. See that we have the three different stations, as I said, the design, the production, and the sales. Also, you can see that Neo Catalog is present in all of them, because finally, as I said, uh, let's start, for example, from design. In the design station, they will use, uh, they are using Neo Textile for separation of images, to make new colorways, to make the repeats, and to create the simulations. Later on, they can, for example, use also Neostampa, the, the printing software, to print some samples on um, proofing, uh, proofing plotters, proofing machines, just a small printers for paper to print um, um, just samples on paper of what the production will be. With Neostampa, as I said, as we can simulate, even we can have same production on different machines we can also make simulations of paper of how it will look the final product on production and make a simulation on a printer paper so they can share on the uh, in the design station they can share uh, small printings on on paper uh, together and also with customers and then they will use the catalog to every time that they create and they have a new design they can input very easily into a new catalog which will be in the center and will be shared to all the other stations not only the design even if we have several designers but also to the other stations then uh, in sales they will have the new catalog where they can receive they will receive all the designs made by the design station and they can share it and show uh, using even new catalog uh, uh, from the computer or also making visits using the iPad version of uh, the iPad version of it. And finally, uh, same will happen on the on the print station on production. So they will receive uh, all the designs from uh, from from the designer from the design department through the Neo catalog because Neo catalog will be up to date up to date always uh, uh, at the moment. So every time the design station uh, post uh, uh, design on the Neo catalog, it will be visible for the print station at the moment, and they can receive it and start working on the print orders that that they have, making all the workflow very fast and easy. So, um, more or less, this is uh, how our workflow works. I will be very glad to answer any question that any one of you may have, so you can contact me to solve any question. I, would, I wanted also to let you know that from our website, all of our software is uh, available to download and test for 30 days, so feel free to any of that, even if it's the design area or Neostamp or Neo Catalog, it's possible to download, test it, and just comment to us if you like it and if uh, you need you have any question thank you thank you thank you gerard thank you gerard francesc and joseph uh, for your time and presentations um, i would like to thank as well the textile magazine and ganesh 
for giving us the opportunity to give a, a snapshot of the Spanish know-how when it comes to digitiz digitization. And uh, on, behalf, on behalf of EAS, Pinter Group, Inedit, and Amec Amtex, it was, a real, it was a real pleasure, and I hope you enjoyed the presentation. Uh, I will now leave the room to Ganesh for the final words, uh, who will explain how to contact us if you have any further questions, comments, or interests. Thank you all, and have a good evening. Ganesh? Uh, thank you. Thank you, Lucas. I thank everyone uh, for attending today's webinar. I thank our speakers, Mr. Francis Lopez of EAS, Mr. Joseph Torrent of Pinter, Gerard Burke of Inedit, and a very special thanks to Alejandro and uh, Lucas of uh, Spanish Textile Missionary AMEC Association. Uh, I would also like to inform our audience that we are having another webinar next week, which will be on the topic uh, technical textiles, the role of technical textiles in post-pandemic world. Do join us to get a deeper understanding of this topic, technical textiles. So stay tuned, stay safe, and this is Ganesh Kalidas signing off. Thank you.